Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Why don't we all stand together this morning? Let's just begin to lift our voice and invite the presence of the Lord into this place. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Lord, have your way. This is your service, God. We praise your name. Come on, lift your voice and bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. For your goodness to us, God. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall Jesus, his praise shall be continually in my mouth. Amen. That's why we come together to worship him, to lift up his name. Um, we want to bring our tithes and our offerings right now to the Lord. If you would pray with me over this offering that the Lord would multiply the gift, and that the Lord would bless everyone that gives today. Jesus, we trust you. We love you so much. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much for your mercy every time that you've blessed us, everything that you've done for us. We're undeserving of your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would multiply this gift, Lord. I pray that you would bless everyone that can give today and everyone that cannot. Lord, we trust you with it. Bless your kingdom. May your kingdom be furthered through our kingdom, through our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Before you're seated, can you just give God one more hand clap of praise? Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, how great thou art. Come on, how many people believe that we serve a great God? How many people believe the song that we just sang, that our God is great? If you believe that God is great, I know it's early in the morning, but can we give God a hand clap of praise like you really mean it? here this morning. I'm glad that we have a pastor who entrusts uh, young men, young whippersnappers to come up here and to teach. Amen. But I'm glad to be in the house of God this morning and to be in front of you today. And I always want to give my pastor honor because I believe that it's good to do. And I never want to take the opportunity to stand in this pulpit lightly. 
So in his absence, I just want to say thank you to my pastor. And I want to thank him for believing in young men and uh, using them and giving them opportunity and place. Um, we're simply going to continue on in the uh, study that we've been doing on uh, renewal. Uh, if you were here last week, then you remember uh, what that study is about. But before we get into that, I know I had you sit down, but if you could stand one more time and we're going to pray. Do it a little backwards today. We're going to pray then. Uh, if you have your Bibles, hold it with you while we're praying and we're going to turn to the book of Lamentations 521. Lamentations 521. Uh, I'll give you a couple seconds to turn there before we pray. Because I know while we're praying, you'll be flipping and trying to pray with one eye open, one eye closed. It's not going to work. Here we go. Once you've got it, say amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for the people that are in your house this morning, God. And I pray that you would open up our understanding, Lord. Open up our minds, God, to receive your word. Hallelujah, Lord, that you've placed in your servant's heart. God, I pray that you would be with us this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, so that we would understand you better, Lord, and let change, God, let change come at the end of this service. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone say amen. Amen. And amen. The scripture uh, will be on the back for those. I don't know if you can see that or not. I probably should have put it in, in a black font or something like that. But if you would read with me, the scripture says, uh, turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will be restored, renew our days as of old. And today we're just going to talk about renewing the heart. Everyone say renewing the heart. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Simply want to talk to you about the heart today. The heart is considered the life giver to the body. Amen. Glad to see our Urshan students up here. I, I was noticing them earlier. I just got to, you know, give them a little shout out. What's up, Urshan? How y'all doing? Amen. I got ADD. I'm sorry. But the heart is considered the life giver to the body. Amen. It, it, it's like the gas in a car, you know. You need that heart. You need that blood. The, the heart pumps blood through the body. It fuels each member of the body to do the task that that member of the body was meant to do. When you hear about the heart talked about in the Bible, the heart is used to portray many different things, not just a physical part of the body. The heart is, is used to, to talk about character, strength. It's used to talk about resolve like uh, when those people in Jericho heard that the Israelites were coming, the Bible says that their heart failed. They didn't all fall down and have heart attacks right there, but their resolve failed them. The heart is a very significant part of the body and must be taken care, uh, special care of. One of the biggest killers of human beings is issues of the heart. Issues of the heart. Once the heart is damaged, it cannot easily be fixed. It, it can be replaced, but that in itself is very difficult. I was reading an article or a study on, on heart replacement while I was studying for uh, this message, and they said one of the things that is so difficult about a heart transplant is that the body that the, the, the heart is placed into, that body will fight that foreign heart that's placed in it. That'll preach one day. I, I'm, I claim that one. I'm, I'm going to preach that one one day. Don't steal it. That's mine. <laughs> Amen. But we're not, we're not talking about that today. We'll talk about this. The heart. Everyone say the heart. heart. About 600,000 people die of heart disease in the United States every year. That's one in every four deaths is due to heart disease. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women. More than half of the deaths due to heart disease in 2009 were in men. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease, killing nearly 380,000 people annually. Every year, about 720,000 Americans die of, of a heart attack. 
or have a heart attack. Of these, 515,000 are a first heart attack, and 205,000 happen in people who have already had a heart attack. Coronary heart disease alone costs the United States about $108.9 billion every single year. Amen. The people that are at risk, if you have ever done a study on heart attacks, uh, it'll tell you that most people that are at risk are people just like you and me, people with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, smokers are at a high risk factor of heart disease. About half of Americans, 49%, have at least one of these three risk factors. Several other medical conditions and lifestyle choices can also put people at higher risk for heart disease, including diabetes, overweight and obesity, poor diet, physical inactivity, excessive alcohol use. They say that the way to protect your heart is lowering your blood pressure and cholesterol. That will reduce your risk of dying of heart disease. Uh, some other things that you can do, follow your doctor's instructions and stay on your medications if you have any. Eat a healthy diet that is low in salt, low in uh, total fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol, and rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. The Daniel Fast is very good for your heart. Amen. It says take a brisk walk 10 minutes per day, three times a day, five days a week. Don't smoke. If you smoke, quit as soon as possible. Three things destroy the heart. Three things bring your risk factor of heart failure at a very high risk. What you do, what you don't do, and what goes into your body. Three things. Isn't it cool how the body parallels the spiritual? Three things negatively affect your heart. What you do, what you don't do, and what goes into your body. In the scripture that we were just reading, the, the scripture uh, in the book of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah is, 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 is praying to God and he says, God, turn us back to you, O Lord, and, and, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Isn't it crazy? If you think about it, isn't it crazy to know that every time the Israelites were conquered, it wasn't because they were attacked and they were weak men and they were overcome because of their lack of weapons or fighting skill. But most of the times that they fell to their enemies was because of a heart issue. If you really think about it, if you really read the scriptures and really think about every time that Israel was overthrown, it was not because the enemy had more weapons than they did. It wasn't because the enemy was mightier than they were, but it was because of a heart condition that those Israelites had. Let me turn your attention to the book of Jeremiah 36 and 31 it says and I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity and I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them but they hearken not the Bible is very clear that every time that the people of Israel, every time those, those, those uh, people of Judah or any of the tribes of Israel, every time that they turned their backs on God, the circumstance or, or their penalty was that they were either put in bondage or they were overcome. If you read the book of Ezekiel, and, and I'm going to read some scripture uh, real, real quickly for you. It's a long portion of scripture, so bear with me. But I'm going to read this for you. But I want you to understand what was going on and why this prophet would lament in the way that he did. It says right here in Ezekiel chapter 8 and 9, it says this. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day, of that month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. 
Then I beheld in lo a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins even downward fire and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God of Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh the jealousy. And behold the glory of God of Israel was there according to the visions that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me son of man lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me son of man seest thou what they do talking about the people of Israel seest thou what they do even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel. Idols of the house of Israel. When did God tell Israel to have idols in the house? And behold, all the idols of the house of Israel, portyard upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah and son, the, the son of Shaphan with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. This is all happening in Israel. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was upward, and, and, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these, he said. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. When did God tell his people to worship the sun? Then he said unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch of their nose, put the branch to their nose. And from this, God lets his people get into captivity. The captivity that the people of God were in was not a light thing. That scripture that we read in, in Lamentations talks about how the people were so broke they had turned into cannibalism. Mothers were selling their sons and their daughters for food because of a heart condition. Not because they didn't have the weaponry, not because they didn't know how to pray, not because they didn't know how to seek God, but they had stopped. They had stopped. And they pursued the things that were around them, the detrimental things. I, I look every day, I, I drive down Lindbergh to go to work, and I see all these things around me. I see McDonald's. There's about two of them on Lindbergh. Right before I get to the highway, I pass two McDonald's. I also pass a Wendy's and a Burger King and a Taco Bell. They just put on Lindbergh a Sweetie Pies. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, uh, right after this uh, Daniel fast, but Sweetie Pies is calling me, and it's calling to my heart to kill me. I promise you, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
But everywhere you look, there are things out there that want to de- or can destroy your heart. Can destroy your heart. Remember, I said three things destroy the heart. What you do, what you don't do, and what goes in. The CDC says that heart disease happens when one thing happens, what you do. We'll talk about what you do. Okay? When you sit on a couch and you never move. When you sit on a couch and you never move, you, you sit there and and uh, I don't know, let's, I mean, it's the church, so I guess you sit there and you read the TV. <laughs> I don't know. But your heart is in trouble when you sit. Your inactivity can hurt your heart. Yeah. Everyone say inactivity. inactivity. Your inactivity can hurt your heart. Closely parallel to that is what you don't do. They're two and the same. The CDC says that in order to have a very healthy heart, you have to do something. They say about 10 minutes, three times a day, five days a week of just a brisk, light walk. I do that very easily. I stand up in front of a classroom and I, you know, I I, I go crazy in front of a classroom of kids every single day. My heart is good. Those kids got me on my toes dancing and stuff. Mr. Never mind. That's great. Whatever. (laughs) But the CDC says you have to do something. The body has to move to protect the heart. That'll preach too. The body has to move in order to protect the heart. And the CDC also says whatever goes into the body can damage the heart. So we can break it down to two things. What goes in and what the body does are directly linked to how the heart will perform. Can I tell us this morning that we have to be very careful about what we are letting come into our hearts? See, I'm not talking about your physical body, but I'm talking about your character. Remember, I told you at the beginning that when we see the heart in the Bible, it's not necessarily the thing that's inside your chest, but the heart is used to, to describe your character. It's used to describe who you are, your love, what you desire, what you want, and what you don't want. You have to be very careful about your heart. There are so many things. Hollywood is looking for your heart. Money is looking for your heart. Everything, relationships, young people are looking for your heart. All these things are looking for your heart and you have to be careful about what goes into your heart because the damage of your heart is based on what you allow to enter inside your heart. Relationships are like junk food clogging up the arteries so that you that the blood that you need to 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 send nutrients to every part of the body is not flowing through your heart. My goodness, the blood that the body needs to be healthy is, is, is dependent on you as the heart to let that blood flow through the entire body of Jesus Christ so that every part of the body can perform efficiently, which means that you have to be clean in order for this thing to work. You have to be clean and you have to make sure that whatever is coming into your heart is something that is good. We can't allow Hollywood to clog up our hearts. We can't allow relationships and promiscuity to clog up our hearts. We can't allow music and things like that to clog up our hearts. But we have to make sure that everything that is coming through our hearts is of God in order to keep our hearts clean before him. Amen. What you do, exercise. Exercise. How do, you, how do you exercise the body? It says that the body has to move in order for that heart to, to pump uh, very efficiently. How does the body move? 
We've seen it. I'm so thankful for, for our young people that came out here to pray the other day. I'm so thankful for the young people that, that came in, uh, into the house of, of God to pray. Uh, two days in a row, some of them came out here. I was very surprised. But the body has to move. We can't just be spiritual couch potatoes. You know, it's very easy for me to say, you know, you know, I'm fit because I don't weigh 300 pounds. Very easy for me to say that. But that wouldn't be the deal if I didn't get up and do something. Amen. So many people have a, a New Year's resolution that, 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 that they're going to be, you know, some fitness guru. And they look up all these different exercise things on the Internet and, you know, they buy the exercise clothes and stuff like that, you know, and, 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 and they, they do their exercise for one day. They, they go crazy. They just go ham for one day, sweating. Wake up the next day and they're sore. They can't move, muscles aching and stuff like that. And they say, you know, I'm. I'm good. I'm an expert now because of my one day. feel like sometimes we do that as Christians. We have a good prayer meeting. We have a good move of God, and, and we count that as being spiritually okay because you felt God. But can I tell you, heart disease, you, you, you don't just experience that one time. It doesn't just happen right away. You, you can ask pastor. When he went in for his, uh, I forget what they call it, his, his deal, whatever, angiogram, they said to him that he, had, he, 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 he could have had these blockages since he was a teenager. Went in at 40-something years old, these blockages in his heart. It doesn't just start right away. But these blockages happen from years and years and years. I'm sorry to call you out, Pastor. In years and years of inactivity. Years and years and years of coffee. Oh, man. This might be the last time you see me, so I might, might as well just go for it. Might as well just go for it. Amen. We can erase that one from the tape. Years and years and years and years and years of not doing anything. Years and years and years and years of coming to church but never coming to the altar. Years and years and years and years and years, and years of the only time that you ever pray through is when it's a revival. Years and years and years and years and years of the only time you ever read your Bible is when it's up on the screen. Years and years and years and years of the only time that you ever feel God is when you're here. It's family time today. It's family time. I'm your brother. I, I love you guys. Years and years and years and years. Can I tell you this morning that you could be sitting here today and you might look good. You got your Pentecostal, you know, you got your swag going. Got that Pentecostal swag. You know exactly how to do the Pentecostal thing. Everybody knows how to do it. You know, you come up, you know exactly when to raise your hand. You know exactly when to say, man, some of us are good enough that you could actually let a tear fall down just by thinking about it really, 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 really hard. Maybe you might think dead puppies, dead puppies, dead something. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. Shame on you. <laughs> Amen. Some of us may be able to do that today, but honestly, honestly, if you look to your left and to your right, you may never see it coming. But there's people sitting beside you whose hearts are spiritually unfit, clogged, arteries clogged by years and years and years and years of things coming in that you never saw, you never seen. You don't see my diet when I'm not with you. You don't see what goes into my body when we're not together. You don't see all, all the donuts and, and, and the coffee again. Sorry. 
But when I stand before you, that's why the Bible says man sees the outside, but God, God sees the heart. And some of us, God is looking at your heart and he says, you, man, you got to do something. Never forget the first time that I really, really, really ever felt a move of God is when I did something. Yeah, I, I had felt it before. I've, I've had times, you know, where I moved at the altar, you know, and, and, I, and I, you know, I felt God and the tears came over me. But, but the realest time was when I, I, I stood up and I, I, it was at a, a corral tour. We went out, I forget, we was in Indiana or something like that, I don't know. But I remember there was a kid standing here at the altar and, and, and it was always commonplace whenever we sang out, you know, whenever we went out to minister. Uh, one of the things that Brother Hoffy, our, our choir director at that time, told us that you guys are not just singers, but you're ministers. So we would go out and we'd minister, we'd lay hands on people and we'd pray for them. And I remember going to Bible school, and, and I guess my heart wasn't really healthy. And when everyone would go out, of, yeah, you know, I knew how to grab the mic. I could do all that stuff. That was easy. But when it came down to the, the real physical test of your heart, everyone would be praying, and I'd just be like, bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. You're good. And I remember one day I said, you know, if this thing is real, I'm, I'm going to try to do it. And so I laid my hands on a young man, and, and, and I said, God, I have no clue what to say to this kid. I have no clue what to tell him. You know, I don't want to mess around and be like, you know, I rebuke, you know, your addiction to checkers. And <laughs> that's not what it was. So I, I, I just relied on God, and I, and I said, God, I'm just going to do. And I just started speaking things, speaking things, speaking things. All of a sudden, this kid starts speaking in tongues. First time they tell me afterwards that he had never spoken tongues before. Got filled with the Holy Ghost right there. I want to tell some young people, after that, after that, man, I, I couldn't stop. It, it was cool. Some of you in here who are inactive, all it takes is for you to become active. All it takes is for you to become active, to unclog some of those arteries and, and, and to, to make your heart healthy again. You have to move. You have to do. Do something. But don't just come and do nothing and die on a Pentecostal platform or on a Pentecostal chair in a Pentecostal church. Don't just come here and sit and die right here in, in the presence of God, but do something. Move. Amen. Amen. What, what goes in? You know, one of the things that, that I read about uh, is that it, it's very difficult. When a heart goes bad, it, it's very difficult to help that heart. Uh, the very first heart transplant was performed in South Africa in 1967, I believe, 1967. But uh, that person, they, 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 they lived about 12 days and then they died. They said that, that the problem was that, that the body would reject the heart. Even today, when it comes to heart transplants, it's a very difficult thing. Yeah, they've, they've got more medication and stuff like that that will help that body not attack that heart and kill it and stuff like that. But it's a very difficult thing to do to have a successful heart transplant and that person to live very long. If we can uh, parallel that spiritually, when a heart goes bad, it's very difficult to get that heart back on track. But because we're talking about the spiritual, the God that we serve is not a heart surgeon. He, he, he doesn't live in the physical realm. We know the heart mender. We know the only one that can successfully not just transplant a heart, but he can renew that heart. When David's heart went bad and, and David sinned with uh, Bathsheba or whatever the young lady's name was. David wrote a psalm. He wrote Psalm 51. And in that psalm, he says, 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let me read that psalm before you today. It said, 51 verse 1 said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou Thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which uh, thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out only or all mine iniquities create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me create in me God is the only one that can create or renew your spirit or your soul. As we're closing today and, and as the musicians are coming out, I want to tell you, there are many people who might be struggling. I understand that it's easy. If you've ever had an addiction before, if you've ever been addicted to something, one of my biggest addictions is crunchy nut cereal. Anybody ever heard of crunchy nut cereal? Okay. If you ask my wife, she will tell you that if she does not closely monitor me, I will go through a box of crunchy nut cereal in one day. God help me if we buy two boxes in that day. If you've ever had an addiction before, if there's ever something you've been struggling with, it's very easy for you to partake of that thing when nobody is watching. Very easy for you to do that thing when, when nobody's there to stop you and say, hey, oh, oh hold on, you, you're, you're going too far. You're going too far. So if there's anything that you're dealing with today at the close of, of this lesson on the heart, the CDC, the CDC says that probably one of the biggest things that people don't do is they don't listen to the instruction of their physician. One of the biggest problems of heart disease and people dying from heart disease, I want you to hear me this morning, is that people do not listen to the instruction of their physician. The last point that I want to make this morning is this. That if you've ever had a heart condition, if you've ever wondered about your heart, one of the things that you must do is you must listen to the instruction of your physician. And the only way that you can do that or achieve that is through the word of God. That is the instruction of our physician. The instruction of your physician, it says, the instruction of your physician will catch anything that might hurt you in the future. The instruction of your physician will help you deal with anything that you're going through right now. The instruction of your physician is very important because your physician knows things about your heart that you may not know yourself. So in order for you, if you want to live, if, if, if you want your heart to be healthy, you need a physician and you need to be in constant communication with your physician about your heart. Doesn't the physical parallel the spiritual? You need to be in constant communication with your physician. And the only way that that is achieved is through a prayer life. It's through reading your Bible. It's through having intimate times with God. I'm not talking about altar call. 
Amen. Everybody catch that? Not talking about altar call. I'm talking about intimate times with you and God alone. You don't bring all your family to the doctor's office when you're having your uh, checkups, do you? You don't invite grandma, grandpa, you know, your youth pastor and everything. Youth pastor, I'm going to the doctor's today. You got time to come with me? I'm going to do a little physical checkup. You do that by yourself. It's the same thing with God. You have to have that one-on-one time with him. Amen. Let's stand as, as the musicians are coming and we're closing today. Amen. God is the only one that can renew our heart. It's not the advice of a friend that can renew your heart. It is not the direction of a parent that can renew your heart. It's not the finely written words of of an author that can renew your heart. But it is the inspired writings of the author, which is God himself. I know it's not rocket science, it's not anything uh, trivial, it's, it's not anything that will blow your mind. It's quite simple, really. It's real simple. It doesn't take 10 hours for you to understand this. It doesn't take a three-point sermon or, or an altar call. It doesn't take the Holy Ghost moving down for you to understand this one thing. That if your heart is to be healthy today, you need God. You need God. You need him every morning. You need him every evening. And you need him every night. You need him to enter in. You need him on the inside. You need to move in him and and through him and with him. You need God. So today as we're closing and we come to a close, I'm going to open these altars today. But I would like, matter of fact, right where you are, we're not going to open these altars, but right where you are, we're all going to pray. And I want you to resolve this morning. I want you to resolve this morning. That you will put in place times where you can get a hold of God. I'm talking about the biblical hours of oblation were the third, the sixth, and I believe the ninth hour of the day or something like that. Three times a day, they would get down and they would pray to God. I know we always talk about the Muslims and how they pray a lot, but if you go back to the old Jewish ways of doing things, three times a day they would pray. I got it down on my wall at work. I I try to do it as often as I can. You ever came into my office, you'd see it right there on the wall. Three times a day they would pray and they would get a hold of God. Why? If God is everywhere, he's always with you. He's omnipresent. So why get a hold of him three times a day? Because your heart has to be healthy. Your heart has to be healthy. Let's pray. God, I thank you today, Lord Jesus, for this congregation. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this lesson. God, I want my heart to be healthy today, Lord. I don't want to ever, God, let my heart begin to decay in front of you, Lord Jesus.